Jesse. What? Mm -hmm. She's actually playing with him. Her decision to do that basically elevates it to another whole level because you don't know the joke is coming. You want to smell my punani. As an actor, I feel like sometimes people don't remember what you say. They remember how you make them feel. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Road to William. Today we're focusing on the actress Tyra Burrell. And uh, I know her from the iconic classic film Black Cinema. From the 90s, Boys in the Hood. Everybody knows that. We all know her from Boys in the Hood. And also, for me, Poetic Justice. Now, to keep it a buck, keep it a bean, I haven't fully watched the movie White Men Can't Jump. Have I witnessed it in real life? Yes. Have I watched the movie? No. But I know her for those two movies. So, yeah, so we're going to learn a little bit about her. I want it to... <laughs> shine a light on her because I found it hilarious that there's this whole thing on her. It's not just a Reddit. Like I didn't even tap into Reddit yet. It's this like whole site that like dedicates I don't know how to I don't know how to really just know that it's like a bio, like an official bio by a fan. Somebody's probably like, no, it's called this. Then say it in the comments. What I'm saying is it's like they really dove into this character and is telling us who this character is and why the character is the way it is. Me and my cousin, Ashley, from Ivy Ball and Basketball Show, we're going to be reviewing Boys in the Hood, um, so look out for that. But, and so we're going to dive in more in detail when we talk about that, but highlight some of the things that I think kind of, I think she deserves her flowers, one of the best actresses from the from all time, for me, from the 90s, so on and so forth. She's dabbled in some things, but she set her stones, her grassroots in those films, and I appreciate that. And uh, I study mainly Boys in the Hood. That's one of those rotating things, that, you know, that I put on. Cause they put so much wisdom in the film and it's it's kind of crazy that they allow the film to be that real that true and um yeah i mean y'all know me i love movies you know that's that's another form of life uh another form of i don't want to just say art it kind of can give you lessons if you look at it right you know it, it, it like feeds on your imagination, how it intertwines with your reality. You're like, bro, what the fuck? All right, Tyra Farrell, um, born in March, um, known for her roles in Boys in the Hood, Jungle Fever, White Man Can't Jump, and Poetic Justice. We'll do Poetic Justice as well, but I liked her in that too. It showed range in just the slightest. Because she was a cool, you know, laid back mom on Boys in the Hood, but she was more stern. She was raising kids. It was a different person. like, But she was still strong within that. Like, she didn't let things like that tear her down. You know what I mean? But in Poetic Justice, I say it's a slight curve, a slight change because, okay, let's see who she is if she didn't have kids. Who is that? You know, um, what would she have been doing in life? Because in Boys in the Hood, it kind of seemed like she didn't really have her own life. It was like she was just at the house raising her kids. Like, life was just passing her by. In this, you know, poetic justice, she gives you, she's just, you know, she's in a moment, like, where you can experience joy like yes there's ups and downs but she has her own business her friends she worked with her friends like she's helping them with their problems and 
she's the go-to. That's a good film too. Like go back and watch Poetic Justice, y'all. I'm gonna review that one. That's a good one. Um, but yeah, so let's get into Tyra. She was born in Houston, Texas, just like Beyonce, if that's for the audience who wants to adapt to that. She moved from Houston to New York after high school and began her career on stage, including roles on Lena Horne, The Lady, and Her Music. Um, she was on Broadway. She made her screen debut in a small role in the 1981 comedy film So Fine. Uh, and then later appeared on Lady Beware, School Days, The Mighty Quinn, and The Exorcist. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Definitely wouldn't have known her for that. I don't. The closest I've gotten to any stuff like that is The Conjuring, and that's as far as I'll go. They're over here trying to talk about The Omen. The Omen's on a commercial every two seconds. Like, they spending hella money on ads because I've been seeing way too many. Y'all, like, this dude is crazy. Um, okay, uh,. A critic believed Pharrell gave a fine edge to the character of Mrs. Baker. Pharrell earned an NAACP Image Award nomination for Outstanding Actress in a Motion Picture for her role in Boys in the Hood. <sighs> yep, so she's still acting. She returned to acting 10 years later with the leading role in Tasha Smith's. Shout out to, uh, shout out to Tasha Smith. What up, Tasha? Hit me up. <laughs> Hit me up. Tasha, like, bro, keep keep reading that. Yeah. Not bad. She later guest starred on Soul Food. I I watched it. I think I was a little bit too young for the series. I, definitely too young for the movie, but <laughs> I was, like, really too young for the show. But Tasha Smith's sister is in that, and I only knew that be, that they were twins because of that reason, because... I I saw Tasha Smith's sister. What's her sister's name? Because y'all not about to come for me. Like, don't keep saying that. I know her from the Soul Food series. Then, why did I get married happen? And I'm like, wait a minute. That's not... Y'all are like, something's wrong with you, bro. Okay. Yeah, she's still acting. Boxed in. Okay, okay, okay. Um, In 2015... Pharrell was cast in a recurring role on the second season of Fox's primetime soap opera, Empire. Y'all know how I feel about that. Where's, what happened to Star? Y'all promised us a two-hour movie premiere that was over five years ago. Empire disappeared. We don't even know what. If y'all want to make a comeback, you just gonna have, you just gonna have to bring Jesse Smollett back to Empire. If y'all want to reboot that, restart it, it doesn't make any sense <laughs> because all these shows is about to go off soon and I need something to watch. Okay, y'all like, bro, what is wrong with this? Okay, so she's been in a whole bunch of stuff. Don't do her. Don't do her. Okay. Don't do it. She was on Full House, uh, The Twilight Zone. That used to be my shit. So let's go ahead and see what's going on. John's work and about Boys in the Hood is that I think that. In the late 80s into the early 90s, um, the hood was a pretty chaotic place. Um, we all grew up, you know, uh, understanding our streets, you know, and so turf is sort of part of the DNA of human beings, I think. But when crack cocaine came in, all of a sudden, the turf was uh, a valuable place. And when they started making a lot of money slinging crack, that allowed them to buy guns and the, and so the turf wars got really violent and most of us sort of said what the hell is going on down there and we used to watch the Sunday night uh, news murder news Bruce right on channel 5 Hal Fishman and it was basically a recap of what was going on in in the hood over the over the weekend how many how many you know how many gangbangers got shot and when boys in the hood came out it wasn't just this innocent black guy who died in the, in the alley. It was Mickey Baker. All of a sudden, I think the whole culture sort of shifted into understanding that the ones, the victims, also have families. They have kids. They have dreams. They have futures. They have um, disabilities. They, and, and it really, in a way, I, I kind of think it was the precursor, maybe the first early whisperings of Black Lives Matter. Yeah, and it, and it um, uh, so what I felt about the script, and then I met 
young brother John, and uh, and we we made a great movie together. All of us made a great movie together. But we this movie has not gone away from our culture, and this movie inspires our culture to this day. Add to that, um, as an actor, I feel like sometimes people don't remember what you say. They remember how you make them feel. And at one uh, screening, I came out and there was this young boy and he was really young. And it surprised me that kids so young were parents let them view this movie because that wasn't my experience. And in fact, I didn't even know what an ice cube was when I did the movie. But <laughs> what happened was I came out and this young boy was standing there and he was crying. And I walked over to him and I said, what's wrong? And he says, I'm going to go home and tell my mama to stop calling me a motherfucker. <laughs> and that touched me. I just, I just have one story about me seeing the picture that really, really was really a prophetic experience for me. Steve actually was up um, there with me. Remember when we went opening night to the Baldwin Theater? The Baldwin Hills? Yeah. Oh, Baldwin Hills Theater, I right? I saw the kid. I went to a couple places on it. I went to Baldwin Theater make sure nothing was going to happen there. I went to the Chinese theater when they had three things. So I, I stopped a fight in front of the Chinese theater on Hollywood Boulevard, right? And I mean, come on now, you're going to mess up my, my career. You know? <laughs> but, but then we went, but, and I was there at the Cineplex Odeon when everything popped off. But hold on, I'll get to it. Cineplex Odeon, we'll talk about the violence that happened in the theater all around the country, but it didn't happen in the theaters. It was happened, there was something happened around the corner from a theater down the street or whatever, they would attribute it to the picture. Of course. Okay. Yeah. And so, because nothing had ever been like it. But it's specifically that the Cineplex Odeon, Terminator 2 had come out a week and a half before. And Boys and Hood was showing a theater that was only seat, seated maybe between 200 people. Yeah, right. In the small and they, house. And they not had the, the multiplexes or whatever, right? And you had all these kids outside that really wanted to see Boys in the Hood, right? And so we're going in and you know, look at it and stuff, right? All these kids outside and and people were in, inside the theater, looking at the theater and stuff. And it's like, it's like, okay, I'll just be real. You know, there's whole, there's a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of crips in there, right? People in blue and everything. There you know, were two kids dressed in all red. They're gonna walk in. And I said, listen, don't let them in the theater. That's what I mean. Don't let them in the theater. I'm telling you, they let them in the theater. I said, they let them in the theater. Me and my my folks walked out. Malcolm, me and Malcolm, and everybody got it and left. We're coming out of here. Boom, everything popped off. Because then and after that, the studios got the, the security. But going back to the ball, here's my story. We were at the ball when, and you were there. I think you went there with Aaron and with Aaron. your son and everything. Else. And they come out, people come out the theater and stuff. And this girl comes up to me and she's all crying, crying. She's, and she with her boyfriend. She's like, I just love this movie. You made this movie. I love this movie. It's such a good movie. This. And her boyfriend was like, you know, he was just really, really thugged up. He just, he, you could tell he had life on his face, right? And he just he while she was she was explaining what he felt. Yeah. He wasn't going to articulate anything about what because he was looking off in space, like well, what he just saw. And then he looked down at me and said, "You made this movie." He said, "Yeah." He said, "He just hugged." Me. And then they walked away. But it was like one of the things like he just looked. He it was like she was she was his woman. She was telling him. She was telling me what this movie meant to him and his life and what he's seen and everything. It was like. That's really one of my most profound yeah. moments because it was in the neighborhood. It was right next to the jungles. It was like, oh, it's like, whoa. Repping the WNBA, baby. Hey, put your W's up, put your W's up, put your W's, W's, W's up. PG is free, back with the Mercury. Is that barbecue? Yeah. Yeah, bring me a Baker told me to bring you a plate. Brenda, <laughs> she might have had a chance. She didn't talk so much. Well, we lost the touch. She still can make some barbecue. Hey, Pop, can you fix my fade back here? And up here? <laughs> Me. After you eat. That's how I'm going to talk to my kids. <laughs> After I'm done. No, I'll, I'll cut their head before. Okay, um, let's see. Ah. You serious, little boy, huh? Yeah, boy, you look more and more like your daddy every day. So tell me something. How come your daddy don't come over here and play cards with us no more? Okay. I know he don't think he's better than the rest of us. Must be too busy shooting at people. I heard what happened over there the other night. He still got that same girlfriend? Excuse me, my 
Yeah. You always play football. Because that's what I want to do. That's right. I got stories to tell you about Hollywood, how I got the boys and what the men and white men can't jump, not to say the N word. And you only hear that word once. But when we were rehearsing, they were throwing that N word all around and it was devastating to me and hurting me. So I had to have a conversation with them about it. Do you mind sharing that for real quick if you have time? real quick that's really important to me because out of all the things i've done i think this is really important in terms of what i've contributed to the art um when we i got white man can't jump uh we went to, you know you you do rehearsals a lot we went into a big warehouse and all the ball players with uh uh woody and uh wesley and ron shelton who was a director and writer they were rehearsing rehearsing and the boys and the men i'm sorry kept kept saying that inward boom boom every time they shot and playing with each other and i was just getting really annoyed because i we don't use the word you know i i think uh i think you should be fine for using it truthfully in workplaces but anyway um so then after Woody and Wesley and Ron Shelton said, okay, we're going to take a break. And the stars, they left. So the guys, all the guys were sitting in there. And uh, this was the scene when I walk up with my baby on my hip. So when the guys, when the director and Woody and Wesley left, I walked over to the guys and I said, listen, guys, we're about to put this in the can and you can't take it back. You guys are throwing that word around so strong. And I said, and it's hurtful and it's painful. I said, when are we going to stop using that word? I said, if you guys can really act, you're actors, right? And they were like, yeah. I said, so if you can really act, come up with words that will express that same word, but use something else. Come on, start acting. That word is painful to me. I don't use the word, but, you know. So then they were like, oh, yeah, yeah. So then went on. We're on the beach in our Winnebago's, our trailers. And then all of a sudden, on the day that we were going to shoot the scene with the baby on the hip and them playing ball, and it's called One Up, you know, that game and ship that they do, One Up, One Up, your mama sold this, your mama sold this. Mm -hmm. Then what happened was I had a knock on my door, and they said, Tyra, I said, what? He goes, we think it's back together. We thought about what you said, and we're not going to use the N-word. I was like, oh, you're kidding. And they said, no, we're not going to use it. I said, you guys are real actors then. So they go out there. And so I'm ready to come on. And then all of a sudden we do a little rehearsal. And then they start saying stuff like, your lips so big and start dogging out big lips. Your skin so black. And they start talking about dark skin. And then they start dogging out women. So all of a sudden when they say, okay, ready? And I walk over to them and say, hey, God, why are you dogging out the sisters? Why are you? I said, I'm black. I said, white women lay in the sun. But I said, come on, don't dog us out. If you can really come up with things that don't dog out the race and the women at all. So they were like, hey, and then Ron goes, Tyra, get off the side, move out. So I moved back and everything, and the guys do it. But when you see white men can't jump, you're only going to hear the N-word once, and that's when Wesley uses it to describe something in its proper context or uh, Woody. And they don't dog out black women, dark skin big lips that they were doing before and all these negative things. So when I went to the premiere, I sat there holding my breath and I really couldn't enjoy it. And I couldn't believe that that's what I did for us, for the culture. They don't use that word. That word hurts me deeply. I tried it with Tupac in Poetic Justice and he turned to me and said, no, that's what we do. I said, I just thought I'd try it. I was going to ask you about that experience. That'll be my last question, working with Tupac. Um, I just watched the movie like last week, um, Poetic Justice. The experience work with Tupac, Janet, Regina, all, the, all those great people on the set. Guy Tory, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah. Joe Tory, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you know, I'll put it like this. You know, it's about the work. We're all equals when we come together. There's no one above me or below me. You know what I mean? So it was like, it was a wonderful experience. Janet was Janet Jackson at the time and Tupac. Oh, my God. I didn't really... Uh, know about him so much because uh, it was hip hop, but I learned about him once I did the uh, the movie. And he was political. D and I used to talk to him all the time when he went to jail. We reached out to him when he was there. Uh, so I knew he was changing. He was changing politically. You know, he didn't and have I, a chance to grow. He didn't have a chance to grow. And you have to be careful what you put out there. He used to always say, "I was going to die by the time I was 24 or 25." He said that over. You have to be careful of your words. They create your reality, you know, it's physics, it's cosmic, you know.
But it was a wonderful experience doing that movie. More importantly, it was wonderful working with John. When I met John, John understood everything about me and we had great conversations. So it was about John Singleton bringing us all together and the timing of, of that movie. So it was a wonderful experience, but you have to know, we were all working together. We were all equals in my eyes. As children watching it on the TV screen, I can say for my cousin and myself in the platform, it was great to watch you as a strong black woman, not only be a single mother, but a strong wife to a, a strong single mother to just every body that we see out here in a black woman you implemented on screen. Mm -hmm. And just to see that that was a minute, tiny part of your life, that you got something grander going on with you guys being superheroes, your husband and yourself. <laughs> y'all superheroes. The stuff y'all do is dangerous. You know, out here doing it with capes on, with superheroes, nothing more. I'll tell you this, though. Uh, it was an honor to work in Boys in the Hood and Jungle Fever. What you need to know is I did Jungle Fever in one month, which played that bourgeois uh, black woman in Benson Hurt, Hurt uh, John Turturro. And then the next month, I went to do Boys in the Hood. So those, what was so exciting about that, because I'm a character actress, and it is about the work, and I wanted to show Hollywood that I could be different. I just wasn't a hood mother, a Boys in the Hood mother, or, you know, a bourgeois. So it was really exciting time for me in my work, but I had worked so diligently, I forgot to have fun. It was fun in the work, but you know, I went on Instagram for the first time when I did Empire, when um, uh, Lee, Daniels. Lee Daniels asked me, and I got Instagram, and I couldn't believe People were calling me an icon and quoting all my lines and all my movies. I couldn't believe the appreciation and the love I got. So I, I thank you for that. <laughs> well deserved. We have Hollywood Royalty in the building, Miss Tyra Farrell and Mr. Don. What's your last name? Jackson, sir? I'm sorry. Don Jackson, a.k.a. Diop Kamal. He changed his name when we went undercover. He was Sergeant Don Jackson. And then we went undercover and got married going into those police departments. He became the up come out. Quiet soldier. Quiet soldier. That's what that means, I guess. Superhero stuff. See the quiet okay, soldier. Okay. Yeah. Also, where can we find your work again? Because I definitely want to go check this out later. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, if you go to uh, policeabuse.com, you can go to the website. You'll see. I took a lot of my videos down, but most of my primary work is up there. Okay. I also developed an app to help people report complaints of police misconduct. So you can find us on policeabuse.com. Um, or you just do a search for policebeast.com on YouTube and you'll see what we've done. Yeah, and there's this one video I got. I want you guys to see. He get, his name is, he goes, I'm Diop Kamau and I have no weapons. And he has all of these cops on a standoff. I mean, he just kicks ass. Like he comes in and he sees a beautiful girl and he's a flirt and he decides to flirt with her. And you see how Justice reacts to him flirting with her. John, you know who lives. Automatically. The chemistry was amazing. Why are you so mad? We knew we had something. You must ain't got no man because you're always angry. We saw those two together. We like, wow. What do you want with me? I mean, you fly. You know, but so it's a dance. You know, you see two young people, male and female, and they're circling each other. What's your name, baby? Lucky. Come on, Lucky. He leans into her as he flirts with her. It's cut the bullshit, okay, baby? And then she flirts back and plays with him. What do you really want from me? Janet was really, really into this. She, she kind of touches herself and she's seducing him. You want to smell my cootie cat, baby? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jesse. What? Mm -hmm. She's actually playing with him. Her decision to do that basically elevates it to another whole level because you don't know the joke is coming. You want to smell my punani? Yeah. Mm hmm should we let him? I think so. Come here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, y'all. Thank you for tuning in and vibing out with me. Hopefully, she got some stuff coming out. We want to keep seeing her acting, all that stuff. But yeah, if you like this video, go ahead, hit that like button, share this video. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Vibe out. I'm dropping. Er day. Er day. Er day. What? Yes, my shit right here. Uh, say what? Yes, my shit right here.